All right. Looks like everybody's in. There's a lot of pressure with like a VIP section. It's kind of weird. I've never been in a talk with a VIP section. I don't know. I have like separate badges or something to be able to sit there. But my name is Bill Lampy. Um, I'm out of Columbus, Ohio. So not from Michigan, but I'm up here quite a bit. Um, I do like West Michigan, especially Grand Rapids. Very fun city. So appreciate you having me in. Uh, I'm going to talk about some sim trends in the market, um, some of my background, so you know why I'm here talking to you, <laughs> to give you some of this. Uh, I have multiple certifications, um, degrees, I was a network admin for a while, like junior network admin for about two years, then I spent nine years as a security architect at a Fortune 500 company, and then for about the past six years I've been um, a reseller. Um, this is not a my company presentation. I didn't want to kind of throw it out, but it, I, I work for Optiv, um, and I've been there for about six years, four years as a pre-sales engineer, and about a year and a half as a director managing a team. So with that perspective, I kind of have talked to a lot of customers, been out in the field, and that's kind of where I gathered this data. It's not really research data. It's really... Bill Lampy's opinion of what SIM looks like in Michigan, Ohio, Western PA, Indiana. So uh, no Poneman Institute stats or anything like that. It's all kind of out of my brain. So um, cool. So this is not a hacker presentation. You know, when I was asked to do this, I was like, OK, I uh, kind of more on the other side of the house. So I know there was a four at the end of the presentation name out there. I don't know if that makes me a little more elite or something, but th this is definitely <laughs> more of a business-focused presentation talking specifically about SIM. More on the blue team, um, really trying to talk about the prevent, detect, respond piece of the game. Um, and I'm staying away from vendors. You know, I'm a big technologist. I'll talk vendors all day and different cool things they're doing. And see me in the hall. Please feel free to pull me aside and talk to me. But I'm really going to keep more concept. Right, features, new things that we're you know seeing out there that I'm seeing. And I do want to say I apologize. I am not a marketer. I'm horrible at making PowerPoints, so I tried to make it simple. I feel like I'm letting everybody down because I saw some presentations that were very slick and marketing, and that's it's not the way I roll. And looking more to kind of educate and talk and, and and go through some of this stuff. So any of the pictures may be a little generic and. A little bit like, okay, what's in the free copyrighted pictures of a lock or security that I could use in this presentation? So, so SIM, right? Let, let's set the table. Uh, what are we talking about when we're talking about SIM? We're talking about security information and event management. SIM, 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 uh, you know, however you decide to pronounce it, I've heard people passionately say SIM, I've heard people say SIM, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, you know, it really combines two practices of trying to go after events and going after information in your environment, trying to marry them together to try and understand what's going on in your environment, aggregating these multiple data points to be able to identify these deviations happening in your network. You know, they're really rules-based engines, looking at risk, making reporting. You may have to do SIM today when it comes to forensics, understanding what's happening in your environment. You know, I started getting into SIM because of lovely compliance PCI when I worked at that Fortune 500, right? That's where we kind of moved from syslog ng to a real SIM that has a rule-based type engine. Um, you know, I'm sure if, if some of you have to go through the fun thing of compliance. Also, from a forensics perspective, being to go back and understand what's happening in the network. Triage. And again, these are just some concepts I want to kind of set the table so you know where we're coming from when I, I talk through some of these different observations. So in the medical community, right, triage is being able to understand urgency in an ER or in some emergency situation to be able to bring in and decide who gets treated first, right? Um, you know, we, we've taken that as IT incident response people in, in the business perspective to be able to start say, okay, let's look at our events in our environment and let's try and go through and understand what's our order of response for these large amounts of events coming from these large amounts of log sources, right? 
So that whole process is, is how we're, we're triaging, right? Gathering evidence, going through, and, and really facilitating that process of taking an event in your network to a full incident, right? Because anything showing up in your SIM could potentially be an incident. So you have to make sure you're properly triaging when you're doing this. A lot of solutions today, which I'll dig in more, is really around automation. I know there's been some talks here talking about the whole security orchestration automation space, um, but that's really what a lot of these different products are going to. And that's purely because there's not enough talent. There's really not enough of us in the industry, which is good for us, right, when it comes to trying to make money and negotiation or, you know, go, going around if, you, if you're a smart security person. But these tool sets are just not enough, right? So there's a couple things happening, you know, to, to push us along when, when it comes to, to triage. Uh, security analytics, you know, I, I get frustrated a bit in the industry when we really turn things into marketing terms, right? I think there's a lot of vendors out there putting out a lot of noise, a lot of fuzziness. They'll name their products certain things to carry on traditional concepts, right? And they confuse the market. Um, but I want to make sure I kind of define what, you know, we're looking at when we're saying security analytics. That's really looking at the enrichment of our data, you know. Adding analytics to our data means we're adding more context. We're adding different um, understandings of what our data looks like on our network from multiple different sources at scale, right? That's what some of these systems are really going uh, to give us. The other concept is data science that I'll be talking about. So. Again, I, I get frustrated and I, I don't go to RSA more because I think it's kind of waste and more too many vendors, but I feel like they always put up you know, data science, machine learning, all these you know more academic type terms to try and confuse the market. And, but uh, aside from that, so uh, data science, you know it's derivating insight from our data. You know what can we do to mine through our data to find different patterns? understand what's normal, how do we do it at scale, how do we do it that's so static, how, how do we use statistical analysis and other things to help us churn through data very fast because we just, there's a talent issue, there's a dis disparate source issue, a lot of things take us down the path of um, data science. The data scientist is a very growing field in the space overall. Right, I know specifically when it comes to marketing, which I'll touch on, when it comes to security, you know, that, that's a big thing. We're seeing a lot of insurance companies hire a bunch of data scientists. I'll, I'll get into that, talking about data lakes and some other types of trends. So those are some of the concepts I just wanted to kind of set the table. So what is the current state of SIM, right? Not fully deployed solutions. Right, that, that's a problem. Right. Talking to customers, going out there, understanding, okay, there's this talent issue, there's these not fully deployed systems, not fully invested as they should, you know, not enough money to deploy that phase two, right? You as a customer going in, using all these use cases, making all this justification, all this documentation, and then you're like, oh, well, let's, we gotta shave it down. We're not actually gonna fully deploy it to phase two. Cut to two to three years later, you're in that same cycle again. Well, maybe it's not this. Maybe it's this other vendor. Let's go to this other vendor to try to help. So it's just this, this thing that just keeps happening over and over again with SIM that it's very expensive, right? You're spending lots of money on it. You're not getting the value you need, right? So there's the issue in the marketplace that a, a couple different things kind of I'll talk through that um, some ways to approach it. You know, is that ROI checking out? Are, are you finding... Um, those events that are turning into incidents in your network. Are you, are you finding it? Are you having your kind of more junior analysts being able to churn through complex data sets like that and be able to articulate some high level advanced things to be able to triage it properly? I, I don't know. Um, and, and really when you try to look at SIM, I, I try and look at a couple different things, right? What's the average time to be able to, uh, you know, find an incident, you know, the meantime to attack what, what's the average time to respond to it? And 
you know, even it's just what's the average time to value, uh, and that's kind of the, the bigger thing that that's been noticed. At least you know, when I, I talk about talking to customers and, and seeing kind of in the marketplace what's happening. So, really, those are some some big metrics that that I would look at, and and really is sim as we know it a failure, right? I, and that's it's a hard conversation with customers and with with everybody because there's some people where it's like you're calling my baby ugly you know I, i've done sim log management for 15 years right and maybe it's not the right way i you know and that that's kind of what going through here just some different ways to approach it and it's a hard conversation and i've seen more newer people in security buck on some of these trends that are, that are happening out there but some they're like oh this is my job this is what i'm used to i'm used to going in doing these static correlations. I'm used to going in and this, this is what I do. <laughs> and you're, you're turning my world upside down. So looking a little bit at the history of SIM, I kind of look at, you know, SIM 1.0 was kind of a log manager, right? Really looking at, and, and we, we spent a lot of money on those filters, right? I mean, now it's a lot easier, regex, right, all that. But then you, you just pour lots of money into these filters. Wasn't very scalable, very strictly security logs, using grep, grep's your friend. Um, then we got into the SIM 2.0. We're like, okay, this is going to solve our problem. This is, the, the SIM's a very important part of our security plan, articulating our security po posture, articulating to, to management what proper metrics we have and need. And we said, okay, SIM 2.0, that's going to do it. You had some vendors come on the scene, and they really helped with that correlation of those security logs. They help give more context by looking at vulnerability data, by looking at NetFlow data, looking at what's going on in the network to help you be able to take a more risk-based type approach when, when looking at your, your security posture. And providing you some IR triage, some basic IR triage within their platforms. You know, you really spent a lot of money on the correlations when it comes there. And still do. You know, that's a big part of the budget are these static correlations. That, that you're you're spending money on, right? That SIM 1.0 you spend on the log filters. Now SIM kind of 2.0 you're spending a lot on. How do we get my correlations? Oh, I got this new log source. You know, because your environment's always changing. You're always getting new applications rolled up. Should you be consuming your web logs? Should you not? Do you have enough storage? There's just a lot of things out there that make SIM a pretty pretty messy space. They have structured searching, you know, very formatted structured searching where maybe unstructured has a better play, right? So what are we looking at now? What is it? Sim 3.0, next gen sim. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a marketing guy as I kind of <laughs> told everybody as they stood up here. Um, you know, looking at full packet. Let's, let's look at the full packet. How, how can we make it consumable from a cost perspective for everyone to see the full payload? But let's set to the side the SSL conversation because that definitely is a, a larger, larger conversation, right, as everyone's looking at their network and talking about looking at full packet capture. But let's give some context. Look at, look at the payload. Let's look at where our packets are going. How about adding in an enterprise logging layer? And I'm not talking about a data lake. I'm talking about, you know, more what other use cases can we find for, for SIM to help us. Moving into the cloud, right? We need to not spend our time maintaining things, right? We don't want to spend our time making sure the event collector is up and making sure the software is patched a certain way, right? We want to be in there. We want to be threat hunting. We want to be going after that triage process. We want to be finding things that are interesting and cool on our network and be able to move our data around that's in interesting ways, right? Um, a, a lot of managed security services, you know, going into MSS, having some first set of eyes on our data, someone looking at it that we don't have the staff and being able to provide, you know, some value to us. Some easy point and click searching, you know, so with that talent issue again, going through and, and being able to articulate complex data sets in meaningful ways with maybe junior analysts that need a lot of hand-holding to be able to present it, but helps you with that talent issue, right? And then the, the whole triage process is kind of big things, right, with the orchestration, automation, and I'll kind of dig into all these topics. Um, analytics, again, as we kind of covered before, 
How, how can we enrich our data more? How can we make it more valuable to us and the organization? User behavior analytics, user entity behavior analytics, they've came on the scene um, a couple of years ago and that they've really kind of shook in the sim market, you know, in my, in my opinion. Uh, data science-based correlations, you know, going back to how can we move quicker, how can we find data faster, how can we find issues on our network faster with not large staff. Digital transformation projects, I'll kind of talk through this and taking budget and some of the bigger projects I've seen in the region have really been ones that have tied on to digital transformation projects and organizations where their budget is way bigger than even the security's budget to, to do business as they transform their business and latching onto that. The MITRE ATT&CK framework, so as security people, this is a, a really great framework to be able to understand the life cycle of attack. You know, so definitely research it. I'll talk about it in a couple slides, but definitely something should be on your list to uh, look through. A more consumable cost. So with SIM, there's a lot of different cost models. There's some newer players on the scene that are really providing per user base cost and maybe not per log source or per correlation or uh, per action, you know, there's just some new consumable costs that may make it easier for you to get that full phase one, phase two, phase three approach when looking at SIM. And then looking at machine learning for anomaly detection and triage. So how, how can we best use these um, statistical analysis and things at our disposal, especially when you start looking at cloud-based infrastructure and not having to have all this big processing on-prem to be able to do some of this. So I'll dig in here, NetFlow and Packet Capture. So, you know, NetFlow, Packet Capture have been around for a while. I'm a big believer that should be in your SIM. I'm a believer you need that data. You need to understand what's happening at the network layer. Um, but, but what's really changed, you know, o over time, right? So I, I think it's a lot more advanced correlation of the data. It's a lot more context to the data than it was previously. You know, the ability to present that data in a consumable feedback, you know, it, it's really kind of interesting. There's some, you know, vendors out there in Hollywood studios to present the data. You know, they've gone out and said, okay, that, that cool hackers movie did all the GUI-based hacking and that, was, that really resonated with people. So they're hiring those studios to make their interfaces to say, okay, let's not make this boring static interface. Let's hire somebody. Or even virtual reality, right? And th that really reminds me of the movie Hackers. That's what that screenshot, um, you know, going through the, the whole mainframe and everything. So that they're really virtual reality trying to attract talent trying to say, oh, okay, you can get people to work for you. you use virtual reality to try and go through this data. So interesting things happening. Um, and obviously data science and analytics as part of uh, packet capture. This really uh, enterprise logging layer, you know, it's kind of come on the scene. And again, it's not a data lake, something kind of separate. But, you know, it, it it's, it's come as a, a way as maybe their use cases has expanded outside of security. You know, maybe you have some operational based use cases that are not fully in security and due to licensing costs, it's better to add this kind of layer in front of your SIM and then pick and choose what, what things are gonna be passed on to the next layer. Um, maybe from a marketing perspective, and this does tie in you know, data lakes down the line, you need to be able to get an analytics engine. Your marketing team wants to understand and consume some of those web logs, consume and understand, you know, where people are clicking from geographically. How do you kind of correlate that all together? Is that a security problem? Is it an operations problem? Digital transformation? All part of it. Um, and then you roll into IT operations and you're looking at, you know, is it card swipe? Is that physical security moving over to security? Right, that's another pretty big trend that's happening, it seems, in the marketplace is more and more uh, security organizations are getting in charge of physical security in addition to kind of the more logical traditional security as we know. Um, or even temperature sensors, availability of our data centers, if we're having data centers, right, with everyone moving to the cloud. Um, you know, if you're, if you're rolling up a new application, you should not be building a data center, right? That, that's kind of the, the new, easier way to build scalable applications. And then license cost savings, right? So maybe they only are having so much 
EPS or MPS that they have license for from a SIM perspective that they need to tone it down with some layer that's shimming in the, in the middle. I want to throw this up there because I think as security people, it's important to understand this because there's a lot of issues in the market, as, as I've seen, with cloud in general. And really, you can look at the basics of this model as, okay, if I'm going cloud, what does that mean? And how, how does this fit into SIM? Uh, I'll talk about, and that's purely the cloud-based infrastructure, but there's so many people that don't fully understand what these different models mean that are going to cloud that you need, to, you need to know it, you need to live it, you need to know that you are in charge of security at every one of these models. Um, but kind of easy blocking and tackling. I, I highly recommend you kind of get, get familiarized with this. Know what the impl implication is on your network, on security in your role, uh, because cloud is coming, and it's coming very fast, because um, it's cheaper. And they have really cool tools if you played with AWS and Azure. Uh, getting a little bit off topic, but they have really cool tools, right? Um, so this gets further confused when you have vendors out there in the marketplace calling something SaaS that's maybe platform or calling something platform that's really infrastructure that's managed that adds a layer of complexity. It, it's just a, you got to dig in when you're looking at some of these solutions. And that's kind of where I say you got to get to the blocking and tackling and get through the marketing fluff of uh, different people you're talking to and looking at organizations like the Cloud Security Alliance and some others to be able to understand frameworks and what you're doing in cloud and there's some NIST stuff out there as well. So I think that's important because I am going to talk about cloud. I know it's like, why did you go on this cloud rant? But uh, So cloud-based infrastructure, that's definitely a newer trend. And uh, don't pay attention to the vendors. I just typed in SIM in the AWS marketplace. Uh, not, not saying any of those vendors, positive, negative, or whatever. Um, those are just the ones that, that came up. But more and more customers looking at, okay, let's not utilize on-prem equipment. Let's use these cloud-based infrastructure. Um, let's look at it from a storage perspective. Let's look at that scalability, reliability, right? I mean, there's a major cost in, in doing this, but, you know, they're going to give you more scale, more reliability than, you know, you can have. Um, and you can just install within your... VPC, you know, within the cloud environment or virtual network, depending if you're an AWS or Azure shop. Um, you know, and, and it's important to know hosted SIM is not infrastructure as, an, as service, right? An organization managing it, you know, is not that. This whole SaaS SIM, I, I think this is a, a big part of where everyone is moving to. And if, if you're not cloud adverse as an organization, this definitely has a lot more positives, you know, when, you, when you're looking at SIM and looking at log management. Uh, no need for a lot of care and feeding on the back end. You know, looking at SIM as a service, security as a service, whatever you want to talk and say. Um, it's not a hosted SIM. It's not a, a SaaS log management. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about deploying the technology components. You're just paying a more subscription cost, which that may start to get into a CapEx versus OpEx type conversation. Um, but that, that's really where everything is moving to, it, it, it seems to, at very rapid pace, right? If you look at your organization and look at more subscription-based, more utility consume, you know, that has its positives and negatives, right? You're always billed without a buffer of exactly what you use when you move more SaaS-based and cloud-based, right? Even down to the second at, at some, when, when you start talking about cloud. Um, but that does open you up freedom-wise, you know, to, to go. There is MSS, Managed Security Service, out there, right? Um, I struggle with this, personally. You know, I, I feel like there's, uh, it, it's going to give you that first level, that 24 hours eyes on glass. But, you know, are they going to provide you the value you're looking for? Do you have misaligned expectations? There's so many customers that really are not aligned expectation-wise when it comes to MSS. They think that there's going to be someone dedicated and teams and teams of people for a very, very low cost, and that's just not true. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's really a, hey, I'm going to help you find the stuff, easy blocking and tackling first-level stuff when it comes to MSS. I'm going to help you correlate threat data and share threat data out there. Um, it, it can help you check a box, but 
you know, I, I've seen so many customers go from one to another to another because they were expecting something different. They were expecting maybe what some of these more next-gen MSSs are starting to provide, which is a mixture of orchestration and staff augmentation and dedicated people because MSS is never, they're going to go down your triage tree, your hierarchy tree that you set out, but they're not going to be enabled in your business to be able to go start contacting people and do things on your behalf as a security organization, meaning there's an alert in the middle of the night, they're going to call and pass it over to you. Um, IR triage, so looking really at that security orchestration automation, I think this is absolutely part of, of SIM. You know, you've seen some vendors in the space that have proven that out. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It is supposed to be part of this whole one-stop shop for what's going on on our network and, and what we're doing. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to clean up that IR process as part of this, make it a little more cleaner. How can we add in, you know, easy vetting to these different events? when it comes to threat intelligence, when it comes to saying this event is more important to look at than this one. Um, and that can be either a manual type framework to follow that's a little more compliance heavy uh, with human processes happening, or that could be you know, something that's running scripts and talking via APIs to all these uh, multiple things with different types of cookbooks and, and whatnot of, of, of how to respond. So uh, the big thing is, okay, how do you have this off-network cloud SIM talking and be able to do this on-network? Some of that stuff is not fully fleshed out. There's still going to be some on-prem equipment needed, but it's definitely kind of where the market's going. So I, I it kind of sum up and say, okay, my SIM 1.0, 2.0, that was mean time, kind of to detect. SIM 3.0 or next-gen SIM, whatever you want to call it, I think that's really what's the mean time to respond in an automated fashion or, or manually. We'll talk a little about UEBA, right? So um, I think that's really hard to be able to detect insider threats on our network just using these static correlations, right? If we, we look at what I kind of talked through, SIM 1.0, 2.0, these static correlations that say A plus B equals alert that you need to go take a look at and do something. where um, this whole, using analytics, using data science, we could tell you what's normal on the network. What's normal user behavior? Let's baseline it. Let's look for deviations outside the norm. Let's put people on watch lists, and let's do that at scale. And that at scale piece is the, right, the, the big part of UEBA, because you can make these static correlations, but they're, they're not going to scale, and you're going to go crazy trying to make those static correlations. There's some now coming out that's more SaaS based, right? More bring your own infrastructure. Um, I think you know Amazon even purchased the UEBA vendor. Um, but it, it, it's really kind of getting in, in, in the whole space, I think, um, shown that there was quite a bit of alert fatigue in SIM. Um, some of the issues that I've talked about with traditional SIMs or SIM in general, it's kind of, you know, I think UEBA came on the space and, and, and kind of said, hey, you can have things better. You can have a new pricing model that's maybe by entity or by user that's not by log source and amount of volume. Um, you know, you can be more use case driven rather than log source driven. You know, understand what you're trying to get at, how you're, smart, you're trying to articulate data. Um, how can we look at entities on our network, things misbehaving outside the norm? And let's make a Fisher Price type interface to be able to go through for our junior analysts and articulate data. Because we, we don't we can't have our higher level analysts be able to dig into every one of those events. They're they're that are going to be on the other side, hopefully, from an IR perspective, from understanding uh, when there are incidents in our network. So data science based correlations. So right, we had the traditional kind of static correlations that really don't scale well. That have taken, as I'd mentioned, a lot of money, a lot of services dollars, a lot of time that people have. And trying to say, okay, let's add science to the mix and make it a little easier for everybody. With the cloud models, you know, you definitely can say that you, you, you can be able to do processing faster and more at speed without having the on-prem infrastructure on your network. Uh, definitely makes that whole bring your own data scientist if you, you have data scientists on staff or kind of rent some from organizations. Because uh, data scientists, I, I don't know, as I mentioned before, it's a very 
growing field where there's a lot of money being thrown back and forth um, at people. But really, the ability to churn through these complex logs, you know, because if you look at something like simple as Windows, right? Windows Event Manager, it all depends on what things are grabbing that log um, to be able to, you know, send it over on whatever format. There's not, not a lot of standards there. So how do you do that at scale without having to create all these different parts of rules? We have this thing called data lakes, right? So marketing, a little bit out there, um, but it is a big growing thing happening in kind of the data world, in the sim world. Not every organization needs a data lake, right? You know, maybe you don't have the use cases to justify it. Maybe it's outside of security, right? Um, so try and make sure it's what you need. Um, you know, what do we use this data lake for? It's really this big central repository for a lot of data, right? They use, um, if you think about when Google came on the scene, how did they go out and be able to index the internet? Right? They had looked at all these different types of file types, all these different types of things that were not standardized. So how they do? Then they had to use this other concepts out there, uh, you know, MongoDB, AppR, NoSQL. It will go and, and bring and, and store all this different types of data. Um, it's really not going to be used for quick and easy searches, not for clean data. A lot of dirty data where we're just throwing it up in this big blob that you're really going to, when you read it, as you're mining the data is when you start forming it and structuring it in the data. But it is really impacting us as security people because we're starting to get, and I'll talk about some digital transformation projects, but really starting to get thrown from a marketing perspective in the industry, um, you know, just, just in general, hey, what, what's this data lake stuff? How do we do it? Do we need it? Do we need to throw all of our data here in this repository that has all this raw data in it? Um, or maybe we don't. Maybe you don't have the business use cases of a marketing team or um, whatever else is out there to be able to go through and, and churn through this data and understand what the data means. Um, so for example, if we're looking at from a marketing perspective, like some sort of focused marketing event. Be able to take, you know, someone liked some golf course on Facebook, right? Um, and then taking another point of signed up for an email mailing list, signed up for lives in a certain area, not signed up, but has bought this brand and kind of churning through that data to say, okay, let's automatically send them a coupon. Why does that matter to you and security professionals? Because you could tie into these projects because data lakes, I'm sure, are getting more and more part of your conversation and things you're being but again, I'll go back to my point. You may not need a data lake. Don't, don't get confused with the hype. Data lakes kind of sit on top of sims, um, and they help orchestrate. And it's a lot of custom work with a lot of tools out there. I would mentioned digital transformation a, a couple of times. Um, so really, that's how do we use technology to help expand and change how we do business, right? Um, there's a lot of reasons you should care, right? Tie your budget to that. I've seen a lot of projects where customer has a SIM project, they're, they're trying to add screens to all of their fuel pumps, and all of a sudden, a lot more budget for SIM appears as they try and churn through and understand what is our data strategy, how do we tie to it, how do we make sure it's secure, how do we make sure we're addressing the risk that comes with doing digital transformation. But important to look, especially with bigger things like like sim the miter attack framework again very important to security professionals you're, you're starting to understand this it's really trying to break down the attacks I think miter is even going out and doing evaluation of, of endpoint solutions and how they break down within this framework but very good framework um, to be able to talk about how does an adversary launch attacks within our network you know, what are there have 11 different stages of it. Um, how do we articulate how this attack happened? How do we make it understandable and consumable for everyone? Um, a big part of this uh, is that sims are adding this in, right? So that, that's one kind of trend we're seeing is that people are adding it in um, to their product set. So I'll bring it up. So what does the future look like, right? In, in my opinion, I think it's something SaaS or managed better metrics, more tied to the business, um, really trying to increase our mean time to attack, mean time to respond, 
how do we automate as we can, as we become more trusting of the whole automation space, right? As IT people, automation has been around since the 90s or before. But I feel like as security people, we're a little late to the game to actually implementing it because of the trust issue and whatnot. But because of our talent gap, we have to be able to start embracing it, especially for you know low-level type tasks within our sim. You know, facilitate turning that event into an incident. You know, no more fail phase two. You know, as I mentioned, uh, trying to do that with cloud infrastructure, better pricing. Uh, no more static correlations. We're moving away from that. Um, reduce complexity. Address the talent gap because that does impact organizations, especially when we're talking about sim. Uh, there's people talking about sim as a utility, so you know more kind of SaaS type services and really getting you from how can I start go after my events rather than worry about the infrastructure of it itself. Data scientists and just better understanding of happening in the network. So that that's my kind of view of the world and, and what I've observed. Um, I hope it was helpful and talked about some things that was interesting, but I will take some, some questions. Yeah, how do we, uh, so, I mean, we're definitely seeing people go down the path of the elk, right? And, and obviously that is a lot of manual efforts, a lot of services you have to do because there's not things that you just buy to turn it into a SIM. There's the X-Packs, security X-Packs and whatnot, and they'll give you some good searching and whatnot, but it won't turn it into a SIM. So, yeah, we are seeing some, it depends on the strategy, right? When we talk about data lakes, do they have a data lake strategy? Does it make sense? Um, you know, you get what you pay for, right? Like when you start going the open source route, you start doing things on your own, piggybacking it, there's a cost there, whether it's, uh, you know, a no throat to choke at the end of the day, if you're looking for patch or whatnot, or um, resources to, to stand it up versus buying things off the box and whatnot. It, it's, it's a mixture of both and it depends on the strategy. What's all different there? There's a back there. Oh, sorry. He was asking, uh, what, what, do, what do I see uh, more customers um, doing DIY with like an elk stack or buying something kind of off the shelf with prepackaged correlations and, and other things? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so it, it gets harder with some things like flat files, right, or event logs in different places uh, that you need to probably put some sort of agent to be able to be the facility. Uh, that's a lot where some of the more commercialized products in the sim space do a good job where they can have a little more intelligent agent that can sit in a certain spot on your network, maybe closed off or start doing some things like caching or encrypting between the sim and the agent. Uh, store and forward, so it really depends on the log sources that that somebody has and and how to address the solution. Um, you know, snare, or whatever else is out there for 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 some of those, or obviously every sim ha has their own agent, and that that's definitely a bigger part of conversations. Is what's your architecture of log aggregation? Do you need some sort of load balancer so you have one IP that you're using for all of your logs, no matter where you are globally? You know, things like that. There's another question.
Sorry, I, I missed the end of other. Yeah, that's that's not a good way to go at it. So really, it's look at, okay, what do you have compliance-wise to do, right? That's the first step. And that's even looking at these next-gen solutions. Maybe you do just a UBA solution as your SIM, and then from a forensic compliance perspective, stick an enterprise logging layer there with, with something, right? Um, but, but go through and understand what do you have to do from a client's compliance perspective. What are your risk assets, right? You kind of look at what's DMZ, what's talking, you know, what's holding intellectual property, you know, obviously user data, um, and kind of way down from a risk perspective from, from log sources. Also run through your use cases that you're looking for, um, but I, I wouldn't recommend logging everything, right? You're, you know, there's just some things a sim are, are not, not made for. Operational based logs, thing, things like that. They're, are, are better tools to consume and, and articulate that data. And that's where it gets really fuzzy, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, I, I've seen that work, uh, get the eyes on glass 24-7 or even nighttime, what, 5 to 5 to 7. Um, we'll see them augment and, and, and try and supplement and then kind of take it on their own with, with their own deployed solution. I, I think I'd caution more with when it comes to managed services, make sure that at the end of the day you can take your data and what does that offloading look like, right? That, that's a big challenge is are you using some sort of proprietary system? Are you using something that's off the shelf that they're managing? And what does the offload look like? Do you get to keep it at the end or are they going to give you just some tar file of logs that's petabyte big that's useless to you <laughs> if you actually had to go back and do forensics on it? All right, well, I, I appreciate everyone's time and uh, uh, that's all I got, so.